All right, it's good to see everyone tonight. A couple of quick announcements here, then we'll get right into worship tonight. Um, if you're watching online, uh, we want you to receive the word and experience God's presence where you are there also. It's good to, for us to be able to get together in the house of the Lord. A couple of quick announcements, ladies. You have a special event coming up here on uh, Saturday the 20th at 9.30 over in the Education Building. We encourage you to make sure, at all possible, to be there 9.30. We have that, um, a guest with us, uh, Joyce Butron, um, that's gonna be here, and she's going to, to share with us uh, that time and just encourage you. So make sure that you uh, have it on your calendar and make sure you put it down there so that um, you can come, invite someone to come along with you. It'll be just a great time. If you have any more questions, you can see Marilyn on that one or call the office, but there is a sign up in the foyer and we really encourage you to, to get signed up on that so we just know how many are coming on that one. So please make sure you're here. Then also, um, they're in the foyer. Um, there'll be more announcements coming on Sunday, but um, a regular event here we do and participate with, um, with Karenette there on the Baby Bottle Blitz that we do um, where we take our change and we change lives with it. And so that's coming up. So if you want to grab your Baby Bottle on the way out tonight, um, go ahead and take it, um, put it in your car window, make your uh, people that see you wonder what's going on in your life, but go ahead and make a change there. So that's coming up and we want to really uh, continue to be a part of, of that. So that runs from Mother's Day to Father's Day. Um, you can fill them up as many times as you want to, um, to be able to, uh, just to be able to help. It's one of the fundraisers here for CareNet in our community. Uh, before we get into worship today, I want to read this uh, this is a miraculous event that took place uh, now. It's been uh, probably a hundred years ago, but, but God's word and God is still the same today. Amen? And it stir us up a little bit here before we get into worship. Um, Amy Simple <coughs> McPherson, um, who was the founder of the Foursquare, of course, um, years ago, was holding tent meetings. And of course, many times when she would come into town um, and do a tent meeting, there would be so many people, they would have to actually call out the National Guard to be able to uh, do traffic control and different things, but she was, at that time, was doing tent meetings, and while she was ministering, um, the Lord dropped in her heart or in her spirit uh, the words, I want to do a creative miracle. And so she paused and she listened to that, and the Holy Spirit said, I want to do a creative miracle. So without hesitation, I like that part. We need to get to that part, amen? Um, turn to your neighbor and say, don't hesitate. When God speaks, we don't hesitate. Um, and so without hesitation, um, she declared, God wants to do a creative miracle. Um, if you need, uh, have a need, come down in the front. And she gave the call uh, for about 10 minutes. However, nobody responded, and so she went right back on to preaching. But the Lord prompted her again later on, so she gave the call again for um, about another 10 minutes. Finally, a woman in a, uh, in a chair with a blanket over her lap uh, came up into the front, and she said, um, I know you said that God wanted to do a creative miracle, but I didn't know if you wanted or meant this creative. Just then, she pulled back the blanket and revealed a baby in her arms that had, that had no arms or legs and was deformed in the face. And Sister Amy then prayed a simple prayer with, uh, over the child, and she told the whole congregation, let's just lift up our hands and worship God. And for 30 minutes, they did nothing but worship God and then something amazing happened. Now, all four of the baby's limbs started to grow out and, uh, from its little torso, and the face was completely restored back to normal. Hallelujah. Like, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. You might say, well, Pastor, that was a, that was a long time ago. Well, uh, God still does stuff in our day. And um, I think from just that little illustration, it reminds us of what the God wants to do. And then we have to be willing to step out to participate with what he wants to do. And then if God wants to do it, I think um, it's good for us just to pause and worship is a form of decreeing just how great our God right. is. And they did nothing but worship for uh, 30 minutes before something started to happen or visibly that was there. And I just want to encourage you tonight as you're, as you're standing and we're ready to, to worship the Lord tonight. And sometimes we just need to worship the Lord until. And it's easy for us to, to pray a little prayer and look and see nothing happened or wonder, you know, if anything's going to go on. Um, I just want to encourage us tonight that we just worship the Lord in our life and just declare his greatness. Um, and just say, Lord, there's areas in my life uh, that I need your creative touch. Um, 
Now, there's areas in my life that are, are disrupted or deformed. And I just want to encourage you. I know there's not a large number of us here necessarily tonight, but you need to spread out if you need to come to the altar. Um, it's not about you. It's about the God that we're worshiping tonight. And I just want you to just unabandonedly worship him and just recognize his greatness because uh, you may or may not have God speaking to your heart, but there is words that he has spoken in his word over you that he wants to fulfill and, and complete in your life. And so we just give our life over to you afresh tonight in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, we thank you, Father. This is our heart cry, Father. I want to see what you want me to see. And be who you want me to be. And know what you want me to know. Say what you want me to say And hear your voice all of my days I'll do what you want me to do And run my race till I am through I am one with you
just lift your name in this place. We lift our voices unto you, Father. You are worthy of our praise. You are worthy of our worship this evening, Father, of all of our attention, God. Oh, we thank you for who you are, Father. We thank you for all that you've done, God. We thank you that you love us, Father. You love us. You're faithful. You're a strong tower in our lives, Father. You're our place of shelter, God. You are a healer and our provider, God. And you never, ever fail, Father. You never, ever fail. He loves us. He loves us. Oh, how He loves us. Oh, how He loves us. You love me, oh how you love me, oh how you love me, oh how you love me. Yes, you do, Jesus. Yes, you do. Yes, you do, Father.
as a church I also believe that there may be some in the room that it may stir your heart and it's Joel chapter 2 verses 24 through 26 it says the threshing floor will be full of wheat and the vats will overflow with new wine and oil the threshing floors of course in the wheat is the harvest that needs to be brought in the vats of fresh wine and oil always represent the Holy Spirit in a fullness of his presence so I will restore to you the years that the swarming locusts have eaten the crawling locusts the consuming locusts and the chewing locusts you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God who shall dwell one who has dwelt dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be put to shame I just want to encourage us by I feel impressed the Lord that that whatever has been seemingly consumed there is a God that is able and willing and ready to restore in our life and he wants to restore to show his greatness he wants to encourage us to, to, to let us know that he's gonna use us to bring in that harvest and we're gonna do it with a with a fresh oil of the Holy Spirit it's not just by our works or our sweat of our brow and to be reminded that whatever the cause of the consumption the, the, the eating up the, the seemingly taking away if there is a God that is able to restore, there's a God that is able to restore. There's a God who's able to restore to the point that we will be satisfied and we will not be put to shame in our life. So whether that's for you individually, but I really know that's for us as the church, that, that God is ready to, to, to restore some things. And I know some people that, that seemingly have been chewed up and spit out, that I know some people that have fallen away, that God wants to restore their lives, wants to bring them back in fullness. Bring them back in fullness of ministry. You know, whatever area that might apply to your life, the Holy Spirit stirs on the inside of you. Folks, we're ready for the for the harvest and we're ready for the, the fullness of the Spirit in Jesus' name. And so we need to just surrender our whole life to Him. God, have your way. God, have your way. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Humbly I come into your presence. And I bow before your throne You are worthy of my praise, Lord And I worship you alone It is you that I do 
desire, your face is all I seek, and Lord, I just want you to know, humbly I come into your presence, and I bow before your throne, you are worthy of my praise, Lord. And I worship you alone It is you that I desire Your face is all I seek And Lord, I just want you to know your heart it might seem impossible or might seem illogical what is the Holy Spirit speaking to you about maybe it's an area of your life that you've given up and figure there's no way to be able to it could work out and yet God is saying that I, I can restore that if you'll if you'll believe me if you believe me I can do it if you'll look beyond the, the moment and be able to see what I can do Maybe it's an area where he's calling you to step out and become more dangerous in your faith. Risky in sharing your relationship with the Lord and trusting in him and in areas of ministry. Giving up some things in your life so that you've got more time for Christ in your life. I, I don't know what it is, but right now we, well, we worship you with, with willing hearts to be doers of your word whether it be the written word that is before us or whether it be the spoken word that you breathe upon our hearts. Lord, you're still calling us to forsake all and follow after you. Lord, if there's any areas, any area in our life that we have not forsaken, if there's any area in our life that we're clinging on to more than you, we ask the Holy Spirit to reveal it to us. We are so clever in deceiving ourselves. So we just open ourselves afresh to the Lord, not just to have an experience, but to be a prepared people to be used in this day. The world seems to be so wicked. The world seems to be at the point of, of where we just almost want to step back. But maybe we have that courageous, bold faith that we rush towards those that need to hear your voice, that need to see a sign of wonder, that need to, to know that God loves them, and to rescue them, Lord. May there be a holy move in this church where we are compelled to reach that harvest that is around us, that we are desperate for a fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit to do it, that we're committed to only be speaking the word of Christ to the world that is around us. 
We just ask for a fresh filling of your Holy Ghost. We're just asking, Father God, for you to move one more time, not just for us, but so that we can be prepared to be used of you. And Lord, we pray for those that are on our right and our left, those that are right around us. Holy Ghost, we thank you for that you are the great helper in their life. Help them to go to the next level in your presence. Help them to go to the next level of, your, of being moved and used by you. Help them to go to that next level of hearing your voice and keenly being aware of it. So like this illustration we use with, with Amy, Lord, that she heard the voice and she, she didn't hesitate to act upon it. And Lord, may they be a stirring on the inside. May we hear your voice in our dreams at night. May we hear your voice as we walk down the streets and we see those that are dying around us, lost in their sins. Lord, may we hear your voice at our jobs, Lord. May we hear your voice in the grocery stores and, on our, and, and as we're going through, may the, that, 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 that deep intercession to stand in the gap, dear God, come upon us and we hear your voice to be able to reach out to others, Lord. And, and understand that our life is here so that you can use us to reach the others that are around us. Open our eyes with that authentic love and compassion, Lord, that we're able to reach them, to do whatever we can, to, to, to Lord, even and put ourselves in a, in a risky situation to be able to touch their lives. Lord, we want to hear your voice clearly. And we pray for those that are around us that we're hearing that voice of God. We're hearing that voice. Lord, we pray for those that are not here tonight. Oh, Holy Spirit, thank you. Thank you that you're not limited to a building. Not thank you that you're not contained to just a location. But we thank you that you are poured out upon this earth. That you're like a wind that moves across our land. And thank you that you are right now moving into people's lives. That you are pouring into their hearts afresh. That you're stirring them again, Lord. You're refreshing them again, Lord. You're, you're speaking to them again, Lord. They're hearing your voice again. It's been so long for some of them. It's been so long since they've heard the voice of God. Fresh it up, Lord. Stir it up, dear God. Speak to them where they are, whether they're, they're high on drugs, whether they're depressed in, 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 a, in, a, in a dark room, dear God, whether they're busy at work and think they're making really a, a difference in life. Speak to them and call them back. Call them back, Lord. Calling them back, Lord. Calling them back to that relationship with you. Calling them back to that fellowship with you. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Calling them back, Lord. For it's too late so we just thank you holy spirit we're not asking you to do it we're just asking lord to participate with you in doing it we intercede for them lord we pray for them may there be a, a coming back may the nets be broken dear god as we draw them back into the the household of faith and fellowship with you and lord even tonight as we as we go to your written word Lord, we don't want just another good sermon. We don't want another good just teaching. We want the word of the Lord that pierces our heart. We want the word of the Lord that we can't shrug it off easily. We want a word of the Lord that, that compels us to change our lives, to be followers after you. So we are receptive to what you want to speak to us so we can be doers of your word and not hearers only. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Does, any, does anyone have something that they need to say or share real quickly? Anybody have something you need to share or say? Kimberly? Can you just do loud enough, or you think? Or, yeah, just be a, be a voice. Amen. Amen. Well, you, from someone that's barefoot, that's a bit, that's a good word. That's a good word. Don't be afraid to step on toes. When we when we speak the word of truth in love, it's okay. It's okay. Um, and we if we step on some toes when we're doing it in love, it's okay. And Hebrews tells us that we have a loving heavenly Father that 
kind of steps on our toes because he loves us, he corrects us, and draws us back. And may the Holy Spirit give us um, not only the words to say, but the, the, uh, the genuine love to speak them and to be able to minister to them in it. And so uh, don't, be, uh, don't be afraid to step on toes if you believe in healing, okay? And we'll minister to whatever restoration needs to go on along the way to be able to bring that healing back into their life and to be able to touch them. Don't be afraid to step on toes. That's a good one. May I add to that just to a degree and, and say, and, and I want to speak to us tonight, um, don't be afraid to stub your toe. And it'll make sense in just a minute. Don't be afraid to stub your toe. Uh, when we f- and, 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 and follow after Jesus and we really are committed to following after him and really be a doer of the word in our life and in our day, um, how do I say this in a nice way without it coming across and I'm, I don't believe uh, or I'm lacking in faith? You're just not going to hit it 100% of the time, folks. I'm not going to hit it 100% of the time. Uh, we're going we're gonna to come short sometimes. Things aren't always going to work out. But the worst thing can happen is we do nothing because we're afraid it might not happen. We, we are afraid of stubbing our toe so we don't take a step of faith. We're afraid it might not work out so we don't do something because we might be embarrassed or something it just you know, along the way might happen. Folks, if we pray for 100 people and only one person gets, gets, gets healed, I'm going to rejoice with that one. Amen? And, and if, we, if we don't minister to anyone, guess how many of them don't get ministered to? 100%. If you want 100%, that's the 100% I can guarantee you at. Do nothing and you will receive 100% on that one. But we're going to be doers of the word. We're going to be willing to stub our toes. We're going to be willing to miss it once in a while. Folks, let's just be honest. I'm just going to blurt it out there with the lack of time that I have tonight and just say, let's be willing to miss it a lot to get it right once in a while and then learn as we go and, and, and miss it less as we go and following after Christ in our life. And we as, as believers, and, and may I just use some terminology tonight as, as charismatics or, or Pentecostals, sometimes we're uh, hesitant to step out in the gifts of the Spirit or in the supernatural because it might not work. But folks, uh, let's get rid of that hesitation and let's have a deeper dedication in our life. And let's step out and do what the Word says to do. And, and I'm just looking at this today and, and meditating on this again today on, on do, do we believe it enough to declare the word of God? Do, do we speak it out with, with a boldness and a faith? If, if we believe it, then we should declare it. It should be a, a declaration that, that comes out of deep within us. And I'm not asking you just to memorize something and uh, just to memorize the uh, Apostles' Creed or just to memorize something. I'm saying we should have this faith that comes from in us that the Holy Spirit then goes and breathes on that word that's in us, and that breathed word comes out of us, and it makes an impact on the world that is around us. I just see Jesus doing that, and I struggle by us trying to do it a different way and think we're going to have the same results as he had along the way. So the last couple of weeks, and I'm on it again tonight by I sense this, the presence of the Holy Spirit guiding me in this direction that we've got to boldly declare the word of the Lord. We've got to speak the word, not out of just being a parrot, not just out of quoting it, but out of a deep conviction on the inside of us that we're willing to declare the word of the Lord. We've said it over the last couple of weeks. I'm going to say it again. Derek Prince says, I encourage you never to let a day pass without making a proclamation from the scriptures. Have you been doing that? Have you been doing that simple, simple step of disciplining your day by starting off with saying, Holy Spirit, Give me a word that I need to declare over my day. Give me a scripture that comes alive on the inside of me that I need to declare over my day. Give me a a word that I need to declare over my day and so that God can watch over his word to perform it. I think it's interesting that we oftentimes when we would, uh, I know growing up in church, we would always pray in the church van before we leave, Lord, go with them. Where in the world do we get an idea that God didn't go with us? 
We were going to church camp. God needed to go with us. He needed to be there before us. He needed to be with the counselors on the way um, and all of those things. But we come up with this religious thoughts of if we don't pray that God's going to go with us, is God not going to get in that van? Is God not going to be along the way? We should be making declarations of it. Lord, I just thank you that your word says that your angels are having watch over us. We declare there's angels round about this, uh, this vehicle, that wherever we go, the or footsteps of the righteous man are ordered of the Lord. God, you're, you have ordered these steps. And these youth, when they're going to camp, uh, they're not going to go there looking for girls or boys or whatever. They're going to be fine going for, looking for you. Although I did find a pretty good deal when I went to camp. But anyway... <laughs> making that declaration over our life. Colossians 3.17, the Amplified says, whatever you do, no matter what it is, in word or deed, do everything, everything, everything in the name of the Lord. And, and in uh, a prayer time there, they're doing some extra studying on Sunday morning there on, in the name of the Lord is more than just a J-E-S-U-S. It's more than just that word. It's more than just a, a name. It, it represents the authority that is in that name of Jesus. And when we declare the word of the Lord, when we decree things that are in line and with the word of the Lord, we are in a sense releasing the authority of thy kingdom come on earth in those particular times. And so I'm just encouraging us again tonight to look at the ministry of Jesus, how he did ministry, and oftentimes how we perceived he did ministry. We think Jesus went around praying for a lot of people to get healed, to get delivered, to get set free. And actually, as we go through the scripture, and we've said this before, but we just need to stir us up again so that we can do it even more in our life. Jesus went around speaking things. Jesus went around decreeing his will to be done. Jesus spoke the word, and it came to pass. I don't know about you, but I want a word from Jesus in my life. I just wrote this down. It just kind of stirred out of me the other day, and I, I wrote it down and just been thinking on it. I want a word from Jesus in my life, not a word of blessing or pro, uh, prophecy of how it's all going to work out all right, but a word that only King Jesus would decree, that Jesus, only he could conceive that it could come to pass in me. I want a word that hell will be fearful of, religious people will hate, and angels will, if necessary, participate in making it come to pass. I want a word from the lips of Jesus that pierce my heart and challenge my thinking. I want a word that the Spirit breathes upon me that's life-changing and brings glory to God. I want a word spoken by Jesus in my life. I don't know about you, but I want a word from God in my life. I want the word to come alive in me, and I want to be receptive to whatever the Holy Spirit wants to speak into my life that is is revolutionary, that is challenging my thinking, that is stirring me deep on the inside to be a part of. But would we be honest enough to say that most of us, most of us don't have the courage to back up our doctrine of faith? Most of us say we believe things, but we hesitate to act like it. We can quote our doctrine of faith, but we won't live it out like we believe it in our life. Would we be honest enough to say that our past failures have hindered our present faith way too much? That when we prayed and it didn't work out, or we said it and it didn't work out, that we now are at a point that we hesitate and we are resistant to simply do the word because it might not work out in our life. We want to see miracles. We just worry that we might not see miracles. So I'm right there with you with that honesty, folks. It's easy for us to say what we believe. It's easy for us to preach It's easy for us to teach. But I want us to say, bless God, we're going to see some of these things come to pass in our life. And we might stub our toe along the way. We might stumble, but we will not fall. We might make some mistakes. Now, we will make some mistakes, but God is merciful. Just turn your neighbor and say, God is merciful. God, God's merciful. He's merciful. He's merciful. 
He does not expect us to be perfect before he can move in our lives. And I just want to go and read some scriptures here in Matthew's gospel, if you would allow me, in Matthew's gospel, chapter 8, starting with verse 1. And I just want to remind ourselves that Jesus went around doing miracles. Is it okay if we just once again harp on it again? Jesus did miracles. And Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Can we just say that the word hasn't changed? Whether my faith is high or my faith is low, whether my courage is big or I'm hiding in the corner somewhere, whether I say it but I, I really don't believe it, well, let's just get back and say, Jesus is the same. And if he went around doing miracles, and this is the part that we need to connect with, that he wants us, his followers, to carry on the mission that he began in the same way he did it. I never see Jesus saying, here's the works that I'm going to do, but they enjoy them because after I'm gone, they're gone too. He didn't say, I'm going to do all of these things to get things started, but after I leave, then, then you're going to have to leave the miraculous, the supernatural behind and just have to, after enough time, get smart enough to be able to carry this on. We are the most educated people on the planet in, in history, and we've got the most decline in the church in history. And yet, we see in the ministry of Jesus here this stirring, this explanation of divine intervention. I like that. We need some divine intervention in the church. We have gotten to a point where we have become so addicted to the culture of the world. We have become an addict to the ability to just uh, uh, be numb to the supernatural. And we need a divine intervention in our life where we are awakened to the fact you are the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. You are the voice of God at this time. You are the hands that should be laying on the, on the sick. You are the feet that need to be proclaiming the gospel to the people that are around you. You are the ones that the world is hoping will come and tell them a gospel that really works in their life and that there are signs and wonders that confirm that gospel in their life. We are to be those people that follow the example of Jesus. That we are here to introduce them to the supernatural Lord Jesus and to have a divine intervention in their life. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 8. We're just going to read the word and just kind of pull it apart just a little bit and see what we can do in the few moments that we have less to stir our faith up on the inside of us. Matthew chapter 8, verse 1 through 17, where Jesus goes and he cleanses the leper. It comes a, a strange thought for us today on what cleansing the leper means. But, but back then, leprosy, of course, was a, a disease that was, 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 controlled their lifestyle. You, you didn't have leprosy. You were a leper. You see the difference. You, you see, today, you might have a cold, but you don't walk around saying, I am a cold. Because you think this too will pass. Leprosy, there was no passing. It became your identity. It became the rest of your life, your existence. It defined who you are. It, it, re, it, it consumed you physically, emotionally, uh, relationships. And here Jesus steps into this man's life. In Matthew chapter 8, verse 1, it says, And when Jesus came down from the mountain, a large crowd followed him. And a leper came up to him and bowed down before him and saying, Lord, if you will. How many times have we heard that prayer? How many times have we heard that prayer? Lord, if you will, you're able to make me clean or make me well. Verse 3, Jesus reaches out his hand and touched him. Now, of course, we've said it before, but it's just a good reminder for us. It was, in one sense, uh, according to religious law, uh, ceremonially, it was, it was it, Jesus was, was violating that law. You were not supposed to touch someone with leprosy. They were the untouchable. In the Old Testament, I love Bill Johnson's illustration, he said, in the Old Testament, if you touch someone with leprosy, you became unclean. In the New Testament, Jesus touched those with leprosy and made them clean. We're in a supernatural a atmosphere. Where things are different now. Things are supposed to be different in our life. And we, the church, when we find people that their life is considered unclean and consumed by something, that we should not step back from them, but we need to have the supernatural power of God that's at work in our life where we can touch their life and we can see a difference. There should be more God in you than anything else that's in them. And Jesus, Jesus, Jesus reached out his hand and touched them, saying, saying, not praying, 
but saying, I am willing, be cleansed. I think it's interesting here that he makes this, again, this declaration. And we know in other places where there's miraculous things that happens where a woman that comes up and touches the hem of his garment, and she is made whole. Her faith is released, and it's incredible things that happen. You would think that just the touch was enough. You would think Jesus just go around just just kind of touching people, but the fact in this situation, he really brings it out, or the scripture really reminds us that Jesus makes a declaration. He makes a declaration over their life. He lets that person hear what his will is for them. He lets the adversary, the demonic forces, the disease, the sickness, those that were around them that were criticizing the individual for even being there, the religious people that thought they were too good to be able to have that person around. He makes it all known, I'm willing that he is made clean. The declaration of Jesus transforms this man's life, and immediately his leprosy was cleansed. Verse 4, Jesus said to him, go show yourself, tell no one, but, but, but go show yourself to the priest. Again, we're in the, under the Old Testament at this particular time, even though it's in the Gospels here. Uh, and, and present your, uh, the offering of Moses according to the, uh, the testimony uh, evident that you are healed. And so this was a, a, a form that they had to go through in the Old Testament that if someone had leprosy and that they, was, they thought they'd been healed, they were quarantined for a time, there was an offering that was given, and the priest then was able to uh, define or, or declare that person, yeah, they really are, they really are healed. And folks, I want you to know that um, in our day and age, that Jesus wants to use us. Can I get an amen and I'm out of there? I, I, I don't know how to say this uh, politely. Oftentimes we dump all the responsibility over on Jesus when Jesus is saying, I gave you the example so you could follow after it. So today we dump it over on Jesus. I'm not saying that prayer is wrong. I'm just saying, Jesus gives us more examples of declaring, of speaking the will of the Father God, of declaring the kingdom's supreme authority over people and transforming and changing their lives than we do him praying for somebody. Now, we need to pray. Jesus prayed. He spent all night in prayer at times. He prayed often in the garden. But then when he came out of that time of fellowship with the Father, he was so convinced of the will of the Father that he went then and decreed it in the lives of people that were around him. Jesus declared the will of the Father. He didn't pray, if it be thy will. He didn't pause to seek any repentance that the person needed to do so that they would be worthy of the healing. He did not probe with questions what caused this illness in your life? Did you really learn what God wanted you to learn because of this illness in your life? He did not hesitate for a moment. He simply touched him and said, I will be thou cleansed. When we minister to individuals, folks, I want you to know the same Holy Spirit, for God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, the Holy Spirit and power who went about doing good and healing all that oppressed the devil. That same Holy Spirit is upon us, the same Spirit of God that's working in our lives. And that we need to understand that when we go to minister people, that we don't always have to get them, get, we don't always have to get their faith built up. We don't always have to get sin out of their life. We don't always have to probe and find out if there's some big cause there. Folks, I'm looking for the day where we just declare, let's get them healed, and then we'll get them straightened out afterwards. Let, let's get them, let's, let, let's get the move of God, a, a divine intervention in their lives, and they'll want to give up sin in their life. They'll want to follow after God in their life. When, when God touches them in such a way, just know this, if it be your will. We've given ourselves such an out at times, and I'll, I'll admit that we've, we've done it, and I'm not criticizing anyone. Kimberly's the one that said stepping on the toes. If I'm stepping on your toes tonight, it's Kimberly's fault. You can deal with her later. I didn't say it, but, but, but there needs to be a stirring. I'm willing. If there's anything that you take away from the message tonight, I, just want, I hope that the Holy Spirit almost haunts you with those words, if I could use that in a sense. I'm willing. I'm willing. Is there anyone that God's not willing to get saved? I'm willing. The worst sinner, God said, I'm willing. Is there anyone that God doesn't want to get healed? I'm willing. 
I'm willing. Is there anyone that, that God doesn't want to get delivered from demonic influence? I'm willing. I'm willing. I'm willing. So, so how is that willingness supposed to manifest itself? It's by us also being willing to allow God to use us in these situations. God, allowing God to, 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 to move through us and for us to have the, a risky faith that we're willing to say, I believe it enough that I'm going to step out there. I'm not the one that's going to do anything here. I'm just a part of a kingdom that is represented in this manner. Jesus came and and he represents and reveals the Father. He comes and he demonstrates the Father's love in this situation, the mercy of God, the compassion of God. Jesus came here and he did more than just preach good sermons and, and, and told some good Bible stories that we still talk about today. Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. And wherever there is a manifestation of the work of the devil, I am willing he's saying to destroy it maybe we need to be speaking that over our homes maybe we need to be declaring it over our neighborhoods maybe we need to be declaring it over this neighborhood maybe we need to be declaring it over our nations or our physical bodies I don't know what it is but I'm telling you that Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil so wherever those works are we need to decree the will of the Father God that is demonstrated through the Lord Jesus Christ and simply do what Jesus did it has to be more than just saying words. It is a decree that comes from the kingdom. It is a decree that comes from the throne room of God itself, the all supreme one. I was having a conversation after a funeral today with an individual, and we were talking a little bit about the, the, the craziness of this world and, and the, 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 the individuals that are probably pulling the strings and, and how, if we're not careful, we can get kind of um, not only paranoid but depressed because how do you really change anything unless we stop and think, we've got one that's over anyone. We have the Almighty One to be able to go to. And to be from his kingdom. Jesus was never frustrated because of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of Caesar's control. He was never frustrated because of who the local high priest was. He simply came to do the Father's will. And he's still making an impact in lives today. Jesus came to reveal the Father. He came to be able to preach good sermons. But he came to destroy the works of the devil. To give hope to those that had no hope, and, and for us, and for us, and for us to continue on his mission to be able to reach the world that is around us, but to do it in such a way that signs and wonders transform lives, and do it such a way that we are proclaiming his word over people's lives. You see, the problem is that when we just make it into a formula without getting along with the Father, the problem is that when we say, well, I, I have it as a statement of our church doctrine, our faith, but I don't believe it so much that I would give my life for it. You see, the word witness in the New Testament is not just someone that said, I pray, I'll tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help me God. A witness in the New Testament is where we get the word martyr. Someone who is saying, I would give my life because of this truth. And I want us to just be encouraged tonight that as we're living for the Lord Jesus Christ, that, you know, thankfully in our day right now, we don't have to necessarily live a risky life of giving ourselves a life dangerously as a martyr. And yet we need to live with that kind of an attitude on the inside of us. That we believe Jesus is so much, that his truth is so much, and that his word is so powerful, and that the spirit of God is in us so much that that we believe that he will watch over his word to perform it in our life. God has not changed his power to do miracles is no less. His passion to restore people's lives is no less. We just need to be more like Jesus in our life. I'm not here again to discourage any of us. I'm just saying this is the potential that we have. Let's start living up to our potential in Christ Jesus. This is what he's called us to be and to do. 
He's not called us just to get together on Sundays and Wednesdays and hear good sermons and, and tell pastor how good he was and, and pat him on the back afterwards and bring him desserts on, and, 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 and birthday cards and, and all kinds of things. Like Those are all good, but that's not what he's called us to. He's called us to continue to go and to pierce the darkness with the truth and to set people free from spiritual bondages. Did Jesus do anything in this situation that we just read that is physically or spiritually impossible for us? I don't know that everybody's convinced here or understands the question, so I'm going to repeat it again. Did Jesus do anything in what we just read that is physically or spiritually impossible for us to do? He touched him and he said... I will be thou clean. Is there, is there anybody that, that's in, that is physically or spiritually impossible for you to, to do that? We hesitate to follow the, Jesus and to do his works. Why? Why do we hesitate? Why do we hesitate to do this? Why? If we had time and I would pull us off and probably be good for us to put into small groups right now and talk about that world question. Why do I hesitate? Why do I hesitate? And we could wrestle for a while and we could look at it from this direction or that, but we could also just stop and be able to say, if we fellowship with the Father, we won't hesitate to do his work. And so I'm not here to, again to discourage anyone. I'm not here to step on anyone's toes, but I'm here to say, folks, we've got to spend more time with the Father. And when we spend time with the Father, and you start to be not only loved by Him, but you realize how much He loves, how much He loves, how much He has compassion for people that are hurting, how much He has mercy for people that are in bondages, how much that He, he, he has, has desire to set people free, it changes our whole perspective when we go out there and we see those individuals. I remember in a Unfortunately, I have to I'll get close to closing here with this one. I was, we were down in Mexico uh, with a, one of our ministry trips, and we were doing an outreach in one of the, uh, uh, the, the poorer neighborhoods. And we were there. We had the children together, and we were ministering to them. And we were doing some fun things with them to kind of get them there. And, of course, giving them some, some um, sandwiches that we had made up uh, for them to eat. And then there was a couple of individuals that I could tell by the way they were dressed, who they were, and what they were coming to say and to do. And there was a, a holy, um, I don't even know what word I'm looking at, other than I can say I sense it every so, every so often as a grandpa when I think somebody's going to do something to one of my grandkids, not over my dead body, uh, you know. And I see these individuals start to come this way, and it was almost like an, a, just an unction. I took off towards those individuals, to be able to push them back from what we were doing here and to be able to surround this situation so that the peace of God would be able to minister to these children and to move those two individuals on down the way a little bit. And I wasn't being angry and I wasn't being mean, but I still remember this unction that stirred up on the inside. Not here you're not going to. And I think that there needs to be a, a fresh stirring on the inside of us folks so we don't have to go on a ministry trip to a foreign country to sense the unction of the Holy Spirit rising up and to be able to tell the adversary that you need to move on because we are going to declare and decree the word of the Lord, that we're going to speak it here and we're going to see it here that there is a holy stirring on the inside of us, that we're not content to just come and hear sermons and sing some songs anymore. We want to see the power of God in our life. And we're going to have holy in intervention in our lives, that, that people are going to come that, that need help, and we're going to see it, and we're going to do something about it. We're not going to wait till the end of the service when there's an appropriate song and we try to hustle somebody down to the altar. I want to hear them getting set free in the back row. I want to see them falling on the floor over here and getting delivered. I want to be able to say, I don't know what's going on over there, but I'm trusting God's doing something in that situation. And it doesn't have to be chaotic, but folks, sometimes our order of service eliminates the Holy Spirit from being able to cause the leper to come in and to be set free and to be changed. 
So may there be a holy stirring in our lives. May there be a fresh desire to follow after Christ in our lives. Maybe tonight you could go home and wrestle with that question, why do I hesitate when I know God is speaking to me? Why do I hesitate? Because if you're anything like me, and I'm sure you're, you're a better person than me in one sense, but I'm saying you're, you're human like me, I hate that afterwards. I hate the fact when Dennis misses it. I hate it when I walk away thinking, why didn't I say something? Why didn't I do something? Why, why didn't I? What was the deal, Dennis? You're supposed to be further along than this. I hate that regret of a missed opportunity that later on, all I can do then, and I don't mean that in a bad way, but all I can do is pray for that person from a safe distance instead of touch that person with the compassion, the love, and the mercy of God and the privilege of a divine intervention. But what if nothing happens? At least I'm not walking away with regrets. At least I'm not walking away training my flesh. If you just hesitate, you won't be embarrassed along the way. Let's be those that are ready to believe the word and declare it over our lives. But let's find some people that need that word that's in your life decreed over them. Let's decree the word of the Lord over our families, our homes. Let's, let's drive through our city decreeing the word of the Lord. I, I, I will close with this, and, and I, I, I pray that it makes sense to, in the application here, it's in, it's, in, it's in 2 Samuel chapter 23, verses 10, somewhere around in there, 10 and 11. You don't need to turn there, but you just grab a hold of it if you will. If you go back up a couple of verses from that, it talks about David had mighty men that were with him. One man that with his sword, he killed 800 of the enemy in one day. And the story goes there at about verse 10, where it talks about how he grew weary fighting the enemy. Has anybody ever grown weary fighting the enemy? But the sword, he'd held on to it for so long that it had like welded to his hand. And I want you to know that the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, that we need to hold on to it so tightly. And maybe you've grown weary and you've fought and you fought and you fought. But all that's done is it's just welded the word to your hand. It's just become an extension of you. Or maybe a better way to say we become an extension of it in our lives. And that the word was welded to his hand. A mighty man of valor and victory. We need to be those mighty individuals today. I know many of you have been fighting the adversary. Dealing with problems in your life and dealing with situations and maybe you're thinking I just don't know how much longer I can go on I want you to know that, that the Bible says that day God got a great victory not the man but God got a great victory that day I want you to not give up and not quit because God needs to get a great victory in your life and while you're not quitting and not giving up on that word you keep declaring it out of your mouth that two-edged sword that comes out of your mouth the uh, I guess a good way to say it in our day and age, that word, the, the sword of the Spirit needs to be welded to our tongue. Huh? Huh? Hmm? That'd be, that'd be good. That's all that comes out is the word. And we decree that word, declare that word to those around us. If you're close enough to somebody, just reach out and touch them. Heavenly Father, we just pray one for another. Or may this be a holy, serious moment here. Lord, we share our faith with one another. To some, they've become discouraged. Some, Lord, impatient. But we're asking, Lord, that right now, as we see your glory coming upon your church, that we would hold tight to your word. That we would, we would decree it out of our mouth 
not like a parrot that has just memorized it, not like a child that doesn't understand it, but as your ambassadors that represent your kingdom. We believe that all heaven is represented and is behind that word that goes forth. So, Lord, may we share our faith one with another as the shield of faith. May we encourage one another. May we, we speak words that will minister grace to the ears of the hearer that are right around us. May you speak and minister in this church and be a place where uh, we declare freedom and liberty and truth into people's lives. We thank you, Father, that as you have drawn us together, that you are equipping and preparing us. We decree that this is the year of the Lord. We decree this is the year of, of your favor. We decree that this is the season that you want to demonstrate your greatness. And so we just come to this point and we say, you are the almighty God. And we believe that you are willing and you are able. And it will be done in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I encourage you tonight, if you sense a word from the Lord for somebody, that you do speak that word out. Go get that person, encourage that person. That we do minister words of exhortation, encouragement, and comfort. That uh, we minister grace to the ears of the hearers of those that are around us. If you find someone, boy, it shouldn't be very hard to be able to minister to somebody uh, before we, we meet. When we close the, the Pastor Dennis part, that doesn't mean that we close the Holy Spirit part. He doesn't leave because I say amen. So as he wants to minister through you or use you, uh, we encourage you, take a pause, look around, listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit, and speak that word to somebody. They may need what you got to share, so don't hesitate. Amen? There's the word for you tonight. Don't hesitate. Just go and do what God's called you to do. God bless you. Ladies, sign up in the, in the foyer for uh, the women's event. Pick up your baby bottle on, on the way out, and we'll see you Sunday morning at 9 o'clock.